Seth is on the line from Long Beach, California. Hello, Seth. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Good afternoon, Leo. Just want to let you know you even have appreciation from systems admins. Wow. So. <laughs> you, you're the guys on the front lines. You're the pros. I'm just an Indeed, indeed. I'm just a um, gifted I amateur. I your show to kind of keep in touch with reality, okay. though. That's a so. good idea, yep. <laughs> yep. And so, uh, speaking of, I have a coworker who came to me actually yesterday asking about setting up um, a home media server. Okay. And what he currently has is just, uh, he's got a couple MacBooks around the house, and he's got a hard drive that only uses Thunderbolt to connect. And then he's wanting to share that out to the rest of the house. Um, I'm wanting to find a cost-effective suggestion for him um, whether he should um, just go with a home media server that has Thunderbolt in it or whether he needs to migrate over to a NAS. So uh, a, NAS, a home media server is really just a flavor of NAS, if you think about it. It's, uh, it's network-attached storage. It's a big, big hard drive sitting on the network without its own dedicated mouse monitor and keyboard that, in the case of a home media server, has software running on it that makes it available via Windows Media or Apple's Media Player or some standard technology so that they can share the media files. But it's really just a network-attached storage unit. In fact, most NAS has mass units have that capability. They have the ability to run in the background media player, you know, media server software, so they can act as home media servers as well. So that's that's really a distinction without a difference. Now, um, you understand, and I, you, you you said the right thing. So he's got currently just a hard drive that's connected by a Thunderbolt. It doesn't have any smarts. Correct. He so, doesn't have anything in between. Um, so the to computer provide the, access. The, com the computer could provide the smarts, but it would have to always be on. Anything that can access that drive could be the smarts. In fact, a lot of routers now are sold with usually not Thunderbolt, usually a USB connector for just this purpose. You can plug a standalone USB drive into a, the router. Apple yeah. sells one branded their one of their own, you know, that's uh, that does the same thing. It's a a router plus a hard drive, um, and uh, those can be used that way too. But I think the best way is your your idea, which is for him to get a network attached unit. Um, it doesn't have to be a home media server per se. What what media technology does he want to use? Apple, Mac? Um, well, he's mainly got uh, MacBooks around the house, and then obviously his kids have iPhones, Androids, all sorts of flavors. Um, so, yeah, I just didn't know. Like when when he first mentioned, yeah, I just upgraded the wiring in my house. Now I want to be able to share my hard drive to the entire house. I was thinking, okay, well, is how does your hard drive connect? Is it media too, or is it just files? Um, it's uh, it's mostly media, from what I understand. Okay. So he wants. But he may. I'll tell you what. You make do something flexible, because I tell you, as soon as he's got this, he's going to say, "Oh, and by the way, I'd love to back up to it too." And how do I get files from my yeah. PC? I got to get all these ripped DVDs on my PC. How do I get them over there? And pretty soon, you you wish you had a full server exactly. you know? exactly. so that's why i would get a nas a network attached storage device synology makes excellent ones i'd get one that supports uh, a technology called plex this is oh yes this is yes. just me you know about plex plex is a great client server media solution you can run plex on anything including your phone your tablet your pc your mac and if you have a Plex media server running on that network attached storage, then any media that's on the network attached storage is visible to anything else on the network uh, in, in a nice way. Plex gives you a nice user interface as well. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was hoping when he'd said, you know, I've got this hard drive, I just want to host it. I was hoping he was going to say it was a USB 3 and I'd say, okay, well, you can get away with it for the time being just buying a kangaroo and using that to host. Oh. Nice. Unfortunately, um, that is not the case. Yeah. yeah, I was just. There are lots of ways you can turn a, a hard drive into a network attached storage. Because, yeah. so he's already got the hard drive, and there is certain convenience to having it be able to unplug from the network server and plug it into his computer, copy files onto it real fast, and then plug it plug it back into the server. You know, if you only have a plug to the server, then it's only copying over the network, and it's limited by the total speed of the network, which is usually a lot slower than Thunderbolt. So yeah. 
that that's not a bad way to go is to look for some sort of head end that can that he can it needs to have a thunderbolt connection and really important a non-proprietary file format and unfortunately a lot of devices like this there used to be a ton of these this should be very common uh, did have proprietary formats for a lot of good reasons which means he couldn't just do what I said, swap it back and forth between his computer. I would, yeah. you know, I would, you, you know, you could take it out of the enclosure and use it. I would look at a Synology, S-Y-N-O-L-O-G-Y. They really make excellent uh, network-attached storage devices with lots of additional software, lots of flexibility, and a very easy interface uh, that makes it, I think, right for uh, somebody like your friend who just wants it to work.